treasonous fast track. And Senator Lindsey Graham bleated out to reporters, if the Democrats don't want to give this to Obama, then stand up and tell me why. There may be some people running for president as Republicans who don't want this. I would be astonished that anybody seeking to be commander in chief wouldn't want this power. It would allow the administration to fight the terror group ISIS wherever, whenever, and however. As if the real threat of ISIS was a mystery to the American people. Most Americans are fully aware that our greatest threat lies in Obama's policies regarding immigration. The bill isn't even warm yet, and Vice President Joe Biden is in Turkey cheerleading World War III, presenting both sides of the issue to Turkey and the American people. Our allies in the region were our largest problem in Syria. The Turks were great friends, and I have a great relationship with Erdogan, which I've just spent a lot of time with. They poured hundreds of millions of dollars and tens, thousands of tons of weapons into anyone who would fight against Assad. Except that the people who were being, who were being supplied were al-Nusra and al-Qaeda and the extremist elements of jihadis coming from other parts of the world. Following World War II, the United States leadership has continually sought to foment and drive the industrial military complex machine into an unending unconstitutional state of global war, creating the very enemies Obama's dictatorial powers would seek to suppress. We have finally reached the precipice of the total annihilation of the balance of powers that act as the foundation of our republic. Let's not get involved in constitutional arguments. President Obama is desperately attempting to disarm the public and re-engineer the United States into a lawless military state overseen by corrupt politicians on par with the horror south of our border. John Bound for Infowars.com. You traitors claiming I'm a Ruski agent, say it to my face and I'll break your nose. I'm sick of it. I will stomp your head in the ground, you traitorous maggots. While we go under Obamacare, North American Union, conquered by European banks, announcing our kids don't belong to us, total bondage, total surveillance, and you want to shoot your mouth off about me being a Ruski agent, I will stomp your head in the ground. Never water yourself down just because someone can't handle you at 100 proof. It's the Alex Jones Show, because there's a war on for your mind. Oh, I, will, oh, I wish we go back to the days. I'm telling you, of just get my satisfaction out in the street. You pick a sword or something else, you're going out in the street. Shane Steiner's involvement with InfoWarsLife.com truly happened in an organic way. I went to high school with Shane, his brother, knew his parents well, and he was visiting the office once, hadn't been to the office in years, and said, wow, I notice you're making and selling supplements. Do these really work? Because I've tried a lot of supplements as a, a workout enthusiast, and I really think most of them are hype. And I said, here, take some home, try it. Well, a few weeks later, he came in blown away and said, I want to buy three boxes of this stuff to give my friends and family. It's simply amazing. He said, why does it work so well? And I said, listen, go to InfoWarsLife.com, watch the informational videos with Dr. Group and others. They understand how it all works. I know that it works for me. That's all I understand. The science, the facts, the research, people's testimonials, they're all on InfoWarsLife.com. You can check it out for yourself. I wanted to go to the gym. I wanted to push myself and work out harder. And that led to me being able to come out and do stuff like the barefooting and the surfing and stuff like that, which I've never done. I, I never would have done that uh, two years ago. Shane has said over and over again, more than just libido and energy, it made him want to get into the gym more. It made him want to get in better shape. And believe me, the Steiners have amazing genetics. Uh, his brother is a world champion steer wrestler. His dad, Bobby Steiner, is a famous world champion bull rider. They've got natural genetics. But when you added this to the mix, in Shane's own words, it took him to the next level. Shane noticed the mental clarity. 
Bobby was able to work out longer and gain muscle mass. He's already completely shredded. I gotta admit, for me, the biggest effect has been libido. Now, I've never claimed to have a body like some beach model, but back when I was 20, 22 years old and worked out every day, I looked great. But over the years, and being married, and having three kids, and working 18 hours a day, I gained basically 100 pounds. And it's been a long process of losing that weight in the last four years. But if you look at the photos and the videos of what I looked like four or five years ago versus today, the results are dramatic. I'd already cleaned up my diet, I was working out hard, but I'd only lost about 20 pounds. It was adding the other key ingredients ingredients from InfoWarsLife.com that helped me personally go to the next level and shed another 35 pounds. This has actually made me feel so good that uh, here lately, about a year ago, I started training jujitsu and that kind of led to doing some boxing and kickboxing. I mean, it's, it's amazing that two years ago I was on the couch and couldn't even tie my shoes. And now I'm training with MMA fighters and uh, just doing stuff that I never thought that I'd, I would be doing ever again. So Super Male Vitality has allowed me to do some amazing things. And if it has those kind of effects for me, I know that it will do great things for you. So just try Super Male Vitality. I promise you, you'll love it. And finally, let's look at Anthony Gucciardi, Infowars.com reporter. He also works with Dr. Group and others helping develop the newest, most cutting edge, high quality supplements. Let's take a look at what happened when he tried to barefoot ski for the first time with the Steiners. And remember, we're not making fun of him. He had the will to get in the arena, and he's lost more than 10 pounds in the last few years of fat and gained more than 10 pounds of muscle and Anthony chalks it up to super male vitality as well. Bottom line, folks, you want to discover the power of super male vitality and super female vitality for yourself by visiting InfoWarsLife.com today or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. Well, one of former President Bill Clinton's mistresses has actually taken to her social media warning friends that she fears for her life. Now, this is the former Miss Arkansas Sally Miller, and she's posted... In this election year, if you read I died by committing suicide, don't believe it. Now, she says she's familiar with the Clintons' intimidation tactics since the 90s. Uh, this is the time she was physically threatened by the Clinton operative. They actually said they told her to be a good little girl and they offered her a federal job. If she didn't accept the offer, then they knew that if she went jogging by herself and they couldn't guarantee what would happen to her pretty little legs. And she just said things weren't uh, very fun for her anymore. They said life was gonna get hard for you, girl. Well, now she fears that she is being monitored while at her home and followed while she's visiting the park with her dog. She gives lots of instances where she's basically being gang stalked. Um, she said that people are coming to her door. People all of a sudden wanna be her friend. Uh, trucks are going back and forth past her home with the tinted out windows. And she said, I know it sounds crazy, but this is the exact type of thing that was happening back in the 90s. And she has every reason to be concerned all over again because she's about to release a tell-all book, The Beauty Queen, Let No Good Deed Go Unpublished. She's gonna elaborate on her affair with the then governor, Bill Clinton, and his numerous vices, including the regular smoking of marijuana and snorting of cocaine. Now, we've interviewed a Clinton insider, Larry Nichols, who has teared open the Clinton machine before. He's also alluded uh, to these vices of the Clintons, as well as the connection there with trafficking, trafficking cocaine into the United States. Uh, just the colossal list of lies and deception you can check that out. It's called The New Clinton Chronicles 2015. That's an excellent Larry Nichols interview. But now we have a very influential CEO saying, you know what, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what is printed about Hillary. It doesn't matter what comes out about her, what anyone says. The 2016 presidential election has already been decided. And this is the highly influential CEO, Martin Sorrell. And he says it doesn't matter about Trump. Hillary will win. This is uh, this has been reported by the DC Whispers website, and they say you know he is the single most influential and prominent marketing firm in the world, with decades-old ties to the most elite of the elite. He's the head of 
uh, WPP PLC. Now, this, they have ties to Fox News, which just check this out. WPP and its myriad of affiliates represent up to half of all Fox News ad revenue. Clients include corporate giants like Ford, GlaxoSmith, IBM, Microsoft, Nestle, Walmart, Unilever, etc. So these are people who result in tens of millions of dollars in ad revenue, the keeping the lights there of Fox News on. And also, of course, pays the salaries of on-air personalities like Megyn Kelly. So when someone like Martin Sorrell sig signals that it doesn't matter who the Republicans nominate because Hillary Clinton is going to be the next president of the United States, it's a prediction or a threat that should be taken really seriously. And this is something that we actually alluded to in one of our documentaries, Obama Deception, where we talk about uh, Obama and Clinton being sweeped up into one of these secretive closed door meetings uh, uh, involving public servants, which means it's being paid for with your tax dollars, where the elite are deciding who will be the next puppet that they're going to roll out for the American people to choose from. Year after year, Estelin and other reporters like Jim Tucker are able to report on future events with stunning accuracy, all because they know the agenda of the Bilderberg Group. The Bilderberg Group sits at the top of the world power structure. 125 of the richest and most influential individuals on the globe make up its membership. From Istanbul, Turkey to Chantilly, Virginia, we have tracked the elusive Bilderberg Group. Bilderberg always insist on a media blackout. By June of 2008, we had already figured out that Barack Obama was the elite's puppet of choice. The national media claimed that during the weekend the Bilderberg Group was scheduled to meet, that Obama had speaking engagements set for Chicago and the Midwest. We knew better. In a classic bait-and-switch, the Obama campaign told the press corps to get on Obama's campaign plane and that Obama would join them on the flight to Chicago. Campaign staff then slammed the door shut. The fawning press had been shanghaied as Obama's campaign aircraft lifted off without Obama. Robert, why were we not told about this meeting and that the senator wouldn't be on our flight until the doors were shut and we were about to taxi to take off? Again, uh uh, you know, uh, we had a desire, Senator Obama had a desire to do some meetings. Others had a desire to meet with him tonight in a private way, and that's what we're doing. Uh, we set up these meetings. They're being, they're being done tonight. Again, I, I'm... I, Is there more than one meeting? Is there more than one person with whom... I'm meeting? not going to get into all the details of the meetings. I, 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 I don't know that I've got a ton more different answers for all of your questions. Obama wasn't going to Chicago. He had a meeting to attend, a secret meeting. Initially, it was believed that the secret meeting took place at Clinton's Washington, D.C. home. Obama's spokesman denied that, but won't confirm where the former rivals met. He also declined to comment on their topics of discussion. For a day and a half, the mainstream media engaged in a wild goose chase, trying to find out where Hillary and Obama had gone. Three cover stories later, the corporate press had to admit they had no idea where the two candidates had gone. And to this day, Clinton and Obama aren't talking. Plenty of sources knew about this meeting, uh, told us and others that it was at Hillary Clinton's house, but clearly uh, it wasn't. In 2008, the trail led us to the Westfields Marriott Hotel, right outside Washington, D.C. We just flew into Washington, D.C. We're driving to the Westfields Marriott. Tomorrow, the hotel's closed throughout the week, into the weekend for the Bilderberg Group meeting. But we're gonna check in the night before. They're gonna kick us out tomorrow. So we're going directly into the belly of the beast. The hotel will be filled with at least five spy agencies, CIA, Defense Intelligence, Mossad, uh, European Union Security. We checked into the Westfields Marriott 48 hours before hotel guests were scheduled to be thrown out ahead of the annual meeting. The building was nestled in the heart of the military industrial complex with the National Reconnaissance Office and Raytheon just a stone's throw away. Robert David Steele joined the Alex Jones Show today where he talks about this Clinton cover-up via the mainstream media and also about the fact that now Bloomberg is wanting to 
throw his hat into the presidential race. I guess he's uh, jealous of the other